Okay, Algebra. Interim review part two. Um, if you want to go ahead and pause the video and try these problems before we even start, that's fine. If not, oh, this is totally crooked. If not, I'll work a few of them out with you, but I'm not going to do, well, maybe I will do all of them. We'll see. Let's see how we go, right? So, number one, what's the formula for volume of a cube? So, volume of a cube, it's actually right up there in the corner there, right next to the window. Uh, volume of a cube is really easy. Uh, you just multiply, you know, or it's cubed, right? So, uh, volume is uh, one side length to the third power, or you can do volume equals length times width times height. Um, a cube is going to be a perfect square all around anyway, so you're just going to multiply that number three times. So, let's say that a side length was, I don't know, nine. You would do nine to the third power, or nine times nine times nine. So, 729, I think? Yeah. Okay. So, basically, that's how you do it for a cube. Um, for a sphere, and that's also up there. Um, it may remain there. It may not. Who knows? Um, for a sphere, it's four thirds, right? It's that weird one, pi r to the third power. Okay, so it's the weird one up there. Okay, volume of a cube, volume of a sphere, done. Uh, number two and number three, they're pretty much the same, so I'll only do one of them, but I'll give you the answer to the other one in a second. <clears throat> um, so we want to change this to slope intercept form, right? Um, that's standard form. So I've got to get slope intercept form, and remember, slope intercept form is y equals mx plus b. I'm trying to get y all by itself, and in this equation, clearly y is kind of in the middle of a bunch of nonsense. So I've got to get y completely by itself. First step here is I've got to get rid of this 5x, so I'm going to minus 5x on both sides. Now, no, I can't subtract 5x from 19 because they're clearly not the same um, term or same type of term, so I'm just going to put it over there. Uh, what I'm left with here is negative 8y equals negative 5x plus 19. And please keep in mind, I, I want you to keep the term with the x next to the equal sign. If you put it over here, that's not mathematically incorrect, but that's not slope-intercept form, right? This is slope-intercept form, okay? Now, last thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to divide by negative 8 on both sides. So every term has to be divided by negative 8. <clears throat> Drop this down. Y is going to equal, and be careful here. Because a negative divided by negative is a positive, but I can't do anything with the fraction because they won't go into each other evenly. Uh, same thing over here. That's a positive and a negative. It's going to remain a negative, um, but 19 is a prime number, so I can't do anything there. That's my answer. Now you can uh, tell me what the slope is of this problem. And the slope of this problem is 5 eighths, and the y-intercept is negative 19 over 8. If you were looking at this standard form equation, you would not be able to tell me what the slope and the y-intercept was. That's why we have to change it around. Okay. I'm going to skip number three. Hopefully you can pause me and get that done. Um, I'll give you the answer in a minute. Rate of change is also known as, we did this yesterday in the review. So a rate of change is also known as slope. Okay, so when we talk about slope, it's how the line changes in y and changes in x, right? That's why slope is also known as y over x, okay? Um, foil. Foil, we've talked about very briefly a couple of times, but you may or may not see this, so I want to make sure you know how to multiply these. FOIL is, stands for first, outside, inside, and last. That's meaning the terms that we're going to multiply together. So first, so the first terms of both of these two expression parts. So 4x times x. So 4x times x is 4x squared. Okay, that's the first thing. Outside, so the O the outside terms, right? So just going to be like kind of geographical with this. 4x times 7, so that's going to be 28x. And remember, you can multiply anything together, right? It doesn't matter if it has an x or not. They don't have to be the same term. Inside is i, so the inside terms, so that's a negative 8 times x. So that's negative 8x. And then L stands for last term, so negative 8 times 7. So this is negative 56. Now I want to combine the two middle terms. The two middle terms you'll always be able to combine because you're kind of multiplying the same things together. So this is going to be 4x squared plus 20x minus 56. This is my final answer. And no, I cannot combine the 20x and the 4x squared because that x doesn't look like that x. They're not like terms because now I'm adding them. You can't add unlike things. That x has a 2, that x doesn't, so they're not the same thing. That's my final answer there. Um, so we'll do some more practice with that, uh, hopefully uh, today um, or whatever. Inequality, I want you to go ahead and try and solve that. It's really the same thing as an equation. Pretend like that less than sign is an equal sign and solve it and do the best you can with that. Let me come back up to here for slope-intercept form. Um, so add 4x to both sides. 
9y drops down equals 4x plus 1. Divide by 9 everywhere. And I'm left with y equals 4 over 9x plus 1 over 9. So the slope of that line is 4 ninths, and the y-intercept is 1 ninth. Okay. Back to this one here. I'm going to solve it just like I would solve anything. I'm just going to rewrite it over here so I can see it a little better. x plus 32 is less than 7 times the quantity 8 minus x. Excuse me. Okay. Um, oh, hey. Ooh. Uh, distribute 7. 56 minus 7x. Okay. Now I can start moving things from one side to the other. Uh, I'm going to add 8x on both sides. Oh, 7x, sorry. X. Getting ahead of myself. I went and caught the ball and ran with it before I actually caught it. That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> 8x plus 32 is less than 56. Uh, subtract 32 on both sides. And hopefully you can still see that. I'm going to just go over here with it. 8x is going to be less than 24. Okay, so we're just still doing it like in its equation. Divide by 8 on both sides. Okay, when I do that, I'm left with x is less than 3. Cool. Now, if I want to graph that on a number line, there's only one variable, so it's only one number line. Right? What you do is you put the number that's actually there, right in the middle. Okay? Now, less than, not less than or equal to, less than. So it's an open circle. Open circle means less than or greater than. Right? If it was less than or equal to, or greater than or equal to, it would be a filled-in circle. Right? So it's an open circle, and when the variable is on the left-hand side of this thing, the arrow is actually pointing to where we're good. Right? So any number less than 3 works in this, in this inequality. Right? 3 does not work because it has to be less than 3. So any number to this side forever going that way, so like negative 3,000 works. 4 doesn't work. Anything on this side doesn't work. So that's my inequality. Got one more problem for you. And you know what? Try these problems again, and you're going to have a very small worksheet to do tonight as well, which is the first time I've ever given you like a worksheet for homework too. Um, but it's super, super important you get this done. All right. Um, so I would probably try these problems again um, without my assistance to make sure you get the same thing again, uh, the same answer. Okay. So table of values. We've done a lot of these yesterday. All right. So I'm just going to give you a table. Right, simply just a very weird table. X values on the left, Y values on the right. That's how you will always see it. Um, if you don't see it like that, you may see it like this, and this will be on your next test also. Uh, you may see it just horizontally. So X will be on top and Y will be on the bottom. But for this, now, let's just do this. So let's say, I don't know, um, let me give you an X value of negative 3, and if I give you an X value of negative 3, the Y value will be 11. And then let's say I give you an X value of negative 1, um, and the y value be 3, 0 will be negative 1, and let's just go with 2. So you see how I'm going in order from lowest to greatest? That will be usually how you see this. Um, now I need you to come up with an equation for this table, like in slope-intercept form. So y equals mx plus b. Um, so basically, I would give you some answer choices, okay? because you'll see this on the test too. So let's just say a is, I don't know, y equals 4x minus 1, b, y equals 5x plus 2, c, y equals negative 4x plus 1, and d, um, I got answers over here, so I'm just rewriting them, negative 4x minus 1. Okay, um, basically what you're going to do is, if I have x values and I have y values, you're going to simply substitute them into here and here and see which of these equations is true, right? We like to do the true statement kind of thing. Wow, I'm at nine minutes already, sorry. <laughs> okay, um, so see if you can find the right answer. Pause me, plug in numbers, see what works, uh, and let me know, so pause me. You're back, awesome, I missed you. I uh, hope you missed me. Um, the answer here is D, okay? So the answer here is D because simply, if I take, zero is usually the easiest one to do because it cancels out whatever the other value is. So if I plug in zero here for x, this becomes right here zero. So 0 minus 1 is negative 1. And look, when x is 0, y is negative 1. In all of these other ones, it only works for this one too. So a and d are your answers because these will cancel. If you have two ones that work, you're going to have to go to a different x, y pair. So for instance, let's go to 2. So here, 
If I plug in 2 for x, negative 4 times 2 is negative 8, minus 1 is negative 9. So that works. But if I plug it in here, I get 8 minus 1, which is 7. y is clearly not 7, so my answer choice has to be d. So really as simple as that. Um, take your xy's, and look, there's xy's here. Substitute them in and see what works. Um, and then we'll learn a little bit later about how this is going to actually work out in our favor for the next unit. Um, do your homework tonight, and see you. Bye-bye. Do your homework. It's fun. Bye-bye.